Hello everyone, my name is Kenton Covescu, I'm an ex-Googler, an ex-BCG consultant, and the founder of RocketBlocks, an online platform that helps candidates prepare for interviews. In this RocketBlocks mini lesson, I'm really excited because we're sitting down with Bill Farrell, who is a former Google product manager. He did a stint at NASA early in his career. He is a Y Combinator backed founder, and he's currently the CTO and co-founder of a company called Outcome Machines. So Bill really has done it all. And in this conversation about product management, we're gonna talk about the craft of product management. We're gonna talk about the skills that are needed to succeed and walk through some common product scenarios and see how Bill would respond to those. So let's go ahead and jump in. Last question. Yes. What tips do you have for building confidence before you go into an interview? This is something I think most people struggle with, maybe all in some sense. Yeah. Um, curious. I struggle with it too. Um, it's hard to be judged in yeah, some sense. For sure. But I think the steps to building confidence that I have found that work for me, obviously practice, practice, practice. Yeah. But let's start with a specific one that my dad taught me when I was just graduating from college, which was film yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hate it. It's so painful to watch me try to answer some interview questions and see where I mess up, see where I pause too much, all of that sort of stuff. But you will learn so much. So you don't even have to film yourself too many times. But I would sit in front of your computer, wear whatever you're going to wear or something yeah. that you might wear take it seriously and film yourself for 10 minutes trying to answer some questions and then watch it. And I think you'll learn a lot about what goes well, what doesn't go well. Yeah. Um, so that would be tip one. And that is just a form of practice, 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 yeah. a learning loop in yeah. the practicing yeah. in some sense. Um, a second part of practice, practice, practice to me is uh, get up in front of a whiteboard and do it like you're doing it for real, mm. whatever whatever the interview is. Yeah. Um, still just actually go to a room and take it seriously. So don't, don't uh, just write it down on your computer or in a little notebook, here's my answers to these questions, yeah. or don't just read the question if you think about it and in your think head. about it in your yeah. head. Like go find a conference room. I, I used to do this when I was trying to become a PM at Google. I would get a conference room in the evening, sit in there, and I would whiteboard <laughs> questions. Yeah. I had a, a stack of questions on the table, and I would be like, all right, question one, going up, I'm gonna try to answer it, and try to, you're gonna improve how fast you answer these questions, yeah. because you're gonna start to feel comfortable in attacking them. Um, you're gonna feel more confident, of course, which is, I guess, the topic of this question, <laughs> but um, I think you're, you're going to have a better interview, right? If I take 20 minutes to answer a question I could have answered in 10 minutes, like that's going to be a totally different perception. Even if I get to the same place yeah. from an answer perspective, um, the interviewer will be like, wow, Bill's really crisp. Bill really knows what he's talking about. When the reality is Bill just practiced. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he had these things pre-prepared, pre-ready. Uh, what else? I find for me, when I interview, whether it's over a computer, um, if, if like if it's a Zoom-based interview, I get a, a stack of paper mm -hmm. and some pens, yep. and I'm able to just quickly write things down. Yep. And I think that for me, I'm often hesitant to just start talking. And I think there's, I'm not encouraging you to just immediately start talking, but I wouldn't hesitate to write something down and say, hey, I'm gonna write some of what you wrote, what you just said down so yep. that I can do a better job of answering. Interviewers, I think, love that or at least don't have an opinion about it. They're like, yeah. great, you want to take a couple notes for a second so that you can get your ideas out and then you can give a better answer? Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and if you're in person, it might feel uncomfortable, but I will occasionally say, hey, do you mind if I grab a pen and write on the whiteboard? Because that's going to help me answer this. And yeah. I, they're like, great, we don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. We want you to do well, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that... Uh, for me, instead of just trying to stuff it all in my head and keep it all, keep my thoughts all organized, I can quickly write down a couple of things yeah. and then say, great, now let me answer your question. I have a couple notes here that I'm going to refer to in a second, but we don't need to focus on that. And yeah. I think that that allows me to also walk them through a guided answer, which again, improves crispness yeah. of your answer. And I think gives you the confidence to say like, hey, if I lose my train of thought, if they inject something, great, well, I have my notes on the whiteboard, I have my notes on the little piece of paper, and I can look at that and say, one second, 
Yeah. yeah, okay, so I wrote down this and I wanted to bring that up as a point. Yeah, it's like a reminder to yourself, which gives you confidence you're not going to like lose your train of thought and then the whole thing is going to snowball out of control. Right, right. Um, the other thing I think you mentioned, and, and you sort of made a joke about it, but it was like, hey, like the repetition of doing this yeah. makes your answers better. And it's like, yeah. well, Bill's not just great at it, he just practiced it a lot. Yeah. But the flip side of it is like, you are good at it just because you practice it a lot. That's how sure. everyone gets good at everything. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, maybe it feels like cheating, but it's like, if you're just building the skill and like yeah. what they want to see is if you have the skill, then yeah. that, that's good. And if that gives you confidence that, hey, like I've done this 20 times, so they're going to ask me a question. Maybe, sure. maybe it's a little bit different, but I saw something like that the first time or the 10th yeah. time I did it. Then it's less like, I think, nerve wracking. Absolutely. But I find the same thing for myself for sure. So one other tip on building confidence um, is if you are a new grad or you're making a transition and you've been in a company, but you're now going to be applying to a bunch of other companies or something yeah. like that. One thing that I would really consider is put a company on the list and interview there first at a company you don't even really want to work at. Yeah. Yes, it's a waste of your time and their time, but it's not a waste of your time, actually. Secretly, it's not. Why not? Because you're going to get practice in a real environment as to whether or not you're ready to interview for your ideal job. Right? Totally. So if, you're, if you've got this dream job up on the board of like, I can't wait to walk in and work at XYZ yep. company, don't start there. <laughs> you will mess up <laughs> and start at some other company where you can get an interview, do the interview, and you're going to be like, okay, I thought I was ready. Wow, interviewing's changed since the last time <laughs> I interviewed. <laughs> I mean, it needs to be a, a good-ish company, but uh, that I think will actually be a big help in giving you the confidence yeah. to then be like, yeah, I nailed that interview or I didn't nail that interview. Either way, yeah. it doesn't matter. You've now got, got the that data experience set on your to, to now be ready to go uh, try yeah. for the big, the big job, the yeah. big company that you wanted to work yeah. at.